Improv is what you do with the information that is coming in to all of your senses at this moment in this room. The question is, can improv be taught or can that kind of sensitivity and responsiveness to the information that's coming in at this room, at this time, in this environment, be taught? Yes, it can be taught, definitely. It's not teaching in the sense that, okay, here's, here's a list of 10 pieces of information for you to memorize. Uh, it's released rather than taught. It's a capacity that each of us has, and it's a matter of giving permission. It's a matter of holding the space so that a group of people can realize the ability that they already have to release information that they already have and to interact with each other in ways that are really interesting and of that moment. So it could be music, but it could be other things. It could be music, it could be conversation, it could be movement, it could be dance, it could be theater, it could be film, it could be painting, it could be economic policy. It could be business, it could be medicine. Okay, when I was writing free play, uh, I was um, visiting uh, for a few days. I had a dear friend uh, who is uh, dead now, Michael Stuhlbarg, who is a uh, pulmonologist in San Francisco. And he was a very scientific, you know, what we used to call left-brained, kind of person who was very logical and so forth. And, and so um, I asked him, what does uh, improvisation and creativity mean to you in your field? And without hesitation, he said, it means relating to the patient who is right in front of you, not relating to a textbook case or a generalization or a diagnosis, but relating to the person who's right there. Okay, so presence. Improvisation means presence. It doesn't mean acting wild or crazy or doing random things or, you know, just anything. It doesn't mean just anything. Okay, because what's happening in this room, the sounds that are coming in the window, the sounds that your partners are making, the gestures that your partners are making, the conversation that you are having is not random. It's intensely and immensely structured. So improvisation means presence and responsiveness to what's really there. So it's very, very close to the scientific method. Improvisation is about data. It's about actual happenings and information, not about having ideas or fantasies or imaginings of what might be interesting to do. I mean, those are important to have too, but a sculptor, uh, who has a fanciful idea for a three-dimensional shape that sounds really interesting, but that three-dimensional shape is top-heavy and sticks out this way, and as soon as you build it, it falls over. Okay, that's not going to work. Okay, so it's experimental science. Improvising is doing, 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 testing, 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 seeing how things work out, correcting yourself as you go along, changing as you go along. Okay, I play the violin, and that's an analog instrument, so you have fingers sliding up and down a string with no frets. Okay, and you put your finger on a place on the string, and it makes a sound, and you don't like the sound, so you're free to change the sound. You're free to move your finger around. You're free to use different kinds of pressure, different kinds of touch. And you keep correcting and changing until you get something you like. And that happens microsecond by microsecond. Okay. We really do the same thing when we're driving. You've got the steering wheel there and it's just always going right to left to right to left because you're always a little bit off course just as your uh, blood temperature in your body is always wiggling around, up and down, around a certain normal value, but it's never at that value, and you're driving around and you're always correcting. 
And that's improvisation in daily life.